Oh, come on. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. They said that his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, my goodness. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, I'm so excited on today. Oh, it is wonderful to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. Oh, my God. Y'all will have to bear with me today because God is simply amazing. Oh, my God. Mm. Thank you, God. Thank you. Okay. I want let me get my shout outs first, okay? Before I start. Okay, so um first I have to thank my pastor, Pastor Gray. Thank you so much for allowing me to stand here on your pulpit this morning. And of course, in thanking you, I have to thank our first lady, which is the excellent example and the epitome of what a woman should be. Yes. And for you to turn 56 this month, you look good. Really good. I also want to thank my mother and my grandmother and my whole family over there for being here. That is definitely my support system. I also want to thank you, the congregation, for being here today. Um, and I want to also thank, just thank God. Um, today, my scripture will be coming from Psalms 145, verses 3 through 7. I um, apologize in advance if the words are different from on the monitors to my right and my left, because I will be reading from the New Living Translation. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate on your majestic glory, splendor, and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will proclaim your greatness. Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. They will sing with joy about your rightnesses, righteousness. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will proclaim your greatness. Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. They will sing with joy about your righteousness. Let us pray. Oh, God. I come before you right now just to say thank you, oh God. I thank you for this day, oh God. I thank you for what you have done, God, and what you're going to do. Oh, Holy Spirit, come and fill this atmosphere, oh God. Lord God, remove charity and let them see you, oh God. Oh God, for your almighty and powerful and all-knowing and you reign forever, oh God. Lord Father God, breathe life over this paper, oh God. Use me any way that you see fit to do so. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. I love that the Young Women's Day theme of saying yes to his will. And this morning, I just wanted to raise a question. Will you still say yes anyhow? Will you say yes when you feel all hope is gone? Will you say yes when it seems like the storm just won't cease? Will you say yes when the winds keep on raging? Will you still say yes when you just can't seem to find the break of day? Let's take a look at Abraham. Everybody knows Father Abraham, and for those who don't, let me tell you. Romans 4, 13 through 18 has conveyed that he was saved by faith and not by his works alone. Clearly, God's promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants was based not on his obedience to God's law, but on a right relationship with God that comes by faith. If God's promise is only for those who obey the law, then faith is not necessary and the promise is pointless. 
For the law always brings punishment on those who try to obey it. The only way to avoid breaking the law is to have no law to break. So the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift. And we are all certain to receive it whether or not we live according to the law of Moses. If we have faith like Abraham's. For Abraham is the father of all who believe. That is what the scripture means when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in God who brings the dead back to life, who creates new things out of nothing. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. I like this because uh, if you know him to be great and majestic and you claim to say yes to his will, you can't back out on him now. You can't put God on a shelf and pick him up again when it's convenient for you. It just doesn't work that way because you are depriving yourself from the abundance that God has for your life. It is clear that God can do much more than you than you can do for yourself. We are talking about a man who told Abraham that he would be the father of many nations. We are talking about a God who raised people from the dead, made the blind see, and the deaf hear. No human being on this earth could do that. That is why I always say that science can only go so far, and then there's God. That's why you must follow him. For Hebrews 11 told me that Abraham followed God even when he wasn't sure where he was going. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. And even when he reached the land, God promised him he lived there by faith, for he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Jacob and Isaac, who inherited the same promise. Abraham confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child, though she was barren and too old. She believed that God would keep his promise, and so a whole nation came from this one man who was as good as dead, a nation with so many people that, like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there's no way to count them. My God, how many people in the room today are going to go get their inheritance, even if that means going out of your comfort zone? Sometimes you have to be a foreigner in a land. These are extraordinary examples of what having faith will do for you. Abraham followed God's will, not knowing where he was going to end up, who he was going to see, or what he was going to be up against, but he went anyway. Come on now, we will say, who will say yes anyhow? The Lord has already made provisions for you. What God has for you is for you. He will move the stumbling box out of your way, no matter what may come your way. Your life will always be wrapped in his hands. Today, you must decide to say yes anyhow. And then wrapped up in all this, uh, the Bible took me to Genesis 22 when God had to test Abraham's faith when he told him to sacrifice Isaac. Now, us 21st century people think that this is crazy. Abraham would have been on CNN. The SWAT team would have been out for him. The authorities would be trying to put him in the belly of a prison. Though this may sound insane, if you have faith, this small, you know that in your right mind, God never intended for Abraham to kill Isaac. Sometimes God has to take you through extreme measures to show you that he will always be faithful. And God shows up exactly on time in any situation because as soon as Abraham was about to pull the knife down on Isaac, an angel spoke to him and said, don't you hurt that boy. But now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your only son. This is my favorite part because when Abraham looked up, he saw a ram in the bush. And I'm so glad on the numerous occasions that God has put rams in my bushes and on my behalf to take my place. I'm so glad that I serve a God who makes a way out of no way, even when the end seems near. I'm so glad that he is there when there is no help in sight. I, uh, I went to a service one day and this man was telling a story about a father and a daughter and the father was teaching his daughter how to drive. She just turned 16 so she was excited and he promised her one day that he would take her out driving so she was excited getting ready she was real pumped 
But earlier that morning, he looked at the weather, and he watched the forecast, and it said that a major storm was coming. So he did not tell her that. So he said, okay, we're going to go out today. So they got in the car. They was driving. And he took her on the highway, and he pulled over on the shoulder. And he got out and said, let's switch. So she pumped, she pumped, she looking in the mirror, everything. She just excited. So as they going down the highway, she like, Daddy, how I'm doing? How I'm doing? He, she, he like, oh, you good, baby. You good, baby. You good. Then all of a sudden, uh, the clouds start to get dark. And she starts saying, wait a minute, hold on. Then that's when uh, she heard a crackle in the sky and the thunder starting to boom. And she like, Daddy, I think it's time for us to switch. He like, no, baby, just keep on driving, keep on driving. And then that's when the rain started to come and it came down harder and harder and harder and harder. She like, Daddy, please let us switch, let us switch. By this time, tears was forming in her eyes. Her daddy said, no, baby, just keep on driving. <laughs> keep on driving, yeah, yeah. So she said, Daddy, please, can we please, can we please? So 20 minutes had went by and they riding through this storm. She can barely see tears coming down her eyes. Then her father said, take this exit right here. And as they were coming off of the ramp, the sun came out of nowhere. She like, Daddy, where are we? And that reminds me of God because sometimes when I feel like I'm about to give up, when I feel like I want to throw in the towel, he takes me off on an exit where there's sun and the birds are chirping and the air is fresh. That's why I can't give up on my God. And let me tell you something else. I, I had applied to go to Bowie State University. <laughs> And I was so excited, like I was pumped. I was like, Bowie is my school, I banked on it. Like I really, banked. I knew I was gonna get in. So I had applied in February and I didn't get my letter back till April and they denied me. When I tell you that I was livid, I was livid. I was going ballistic, I was crying. I, I really almost lost my mind. But then one day when I opened the Bible, it said, let thy will be done, but not yours. So I said, maybe this is not what God has for me. But I said, let me, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and appeal. So I had appealed and they said, they're going to get back to me in 14 business days. And then once they, my appeal comes back and if they still say no, I know that God has something greater for me in a, on the other side. Sometimes, sometimes what you want is not what's best for you. God knows what's best for you. Because maybe I'm thinking small, since Bowie is everything to me, maybe I'm thinking small and God has something bigger. And I like how the time when I felt low, when I felt hurt, when Bowie rejected me, and, I, and the times when I didn't have my Bible next to me, I remember some scriptures when it said, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Or on Christ the solid rock I stand, whom shall I be afraid? That weeping may endure for the night, but joy come in the morning. I have peace now. And I love when the songwriter says, um, I got evidence. This right here is my evidence. And I have confidence now because I know that I'm a conqueror, but I know that I shall win. I know exactly who I am because God wrote it in his plan for me. My name is Victory. I have victory in Jesus. I have power in Jesus. You have dominion over everything in Jesus. You have deliverance in Jesus. God is amazing. Will you say yes today? If he did it before, he will do it again. He was the same God back then and he's the same God today. I have proof, and all I need is to say yes to his will anyhow, just anyhow. And I ask today, is there anyone who will say yes anyhow, who will go through trials and tribulations? It's not easy on this walk. It's not easy at all, but that's the beauty of it. It's not supposed to be. And I'm just excited if you know who holds your hand and you know who holds the future and you know who holds tomorrow and you know who brought you to April the 28th, 2013, how can you go wrong? Oh, my God. Is there anyone today that would like to join church or give their life to Christ? It's amazing. Being on Jesus' team is absolutely amazing. It's nothing better. It's not going to be easy. 
It's not supposed to be. But I'm glad that I'm here today. I could have been anywhere, anywhere. And I'm just an ordinary person. And you see me up here, nobody would have thought that Charity would be up here. Nobody. But look at God. Just look at him. Oh, hallelujah. Is there anyone today?